Hello. Uh, so today what I want to do is uh, talk about interfacing one of these industrial grade proximity sensors to an Arduino type device. In this particular case, I'm going to be um, dealing with a Teensy 3.1, which is currently sitting on a Patent Robotics uh, motherboard. And uh, to start off with, uh, we have to sort of figure out exactly what it is that we've got here. Um, it does have a clearly labeled um, uh, ID number on it. It's an 872C N12NP18-D4. And if I search on the internet, I'll find that that corresponds to, oops, that corresponds to this device right here. And uh, we can actually see it uh, right there. That's the part number that matches up. And what we have here is a three-wire DC extended sensing sensor. It's important to realize that actually this device has four wire connection on it, but actually only three of them are going to be utilized. That's to make it so it fits into a standard four element cable that they use for other uh, devices. And uh, if we take a look at it, come down here, we see that it is in fact a PNP device and it's normally open and it uses the micro QD style. So if I jump over to this site where we have the 872C class of device, three wire DC uh, with the micro QD style, uh, we find that this is the, we know it's a PNP from the last diagram, so this is what we're going to be talking about right here, where we're going to have a positive, a negative, and a and a load. This is a sourcing device. It's going to output the same voltage when it gets uh, in proximity to metal as is input. This particular one is rated between uh, 10 and 30 volts, so we would expect something in the order of 10 to 30 volts coming out here when it uh, triggers high in proximity to something metal. And if we come back over here to the diagram, let me zoom in just a little bit. And move that over. You can see that I have it currently hooked up, and I'll explain. My, oh, actually, I'll talk about it right now. So the Patent Robotics motherboard is hooked up now with a 12 volt supply plugged into a wall ward over here. Uh, I do have this jumper set to VN, which then means that this entire side of the board is getting its power directly from this wall ward. So it's going to be running 12 volts where I have it set, which then in turn means that the center row of pins, the entire center row, is going to be the positive 12 volts. The entire outer row of pins, okay, is going to be a common ground. The inner set of pins is all going to be signal pins hooked directly to the Teensy, which then means that they are going to be a 3.3 volt, since this is a uh, Teensy 3.1. It can handle up to 5, but can only actually safely interpret 3.3. These uh, pins here, or sockets I should say, all are hooked directly up to signal as well. So they're handy for, uh, uh, for breadboarding or prototyping. You can just insert a simple piece of wire directly into it and be able to hook it up. And last but not least, these two pins here, with it set on VN, um, are going to be ground and 12 volt supply because that's what I've got coming in right here. So that inner female socket is going to be 12 volts. That outer one is going to be ground. So if you see what I've done here is I have this red wire going to my center bus which is providing the current going to the red bus on this breadboard. The black of course going to ground. And I have plugged in the brown wire uh, to the sensor to the supply line. Okay, so it shares the bus with the red wire. The blue wire coming from the sensor is hooked up into ground, so it of course shares the common bus with the ground wire. Um, and if we run it just as it is, these things have an onboard LED. And if you look carefully here near the, uh, the attachment point, as I move it closer, you can vaguely see that, but it does in fact light up. 
All right, so we can see that it is working. Now you'll notice by coincidence, this light is lighting as well, maybe, um, but I'll explain that in just a moment. So, like I said, since this is a PMP sourcing device hooked to a 12 volt supply, that means it's going to output 12 volts here, or approximately 12 volts. Well, 12 volts is way too much for the Teensy to be able to handle directly. It can handle 5, but only interpret 3.3, especially if we're going to try to read how many volts it actually is. So this is a 1 to 5 splitter, okay? And you can see here that I have the ground hooked to the ground, okay, the common ground. And I have the black wire coming out and hooking into the VN of this uh, five, one to five splitter. Notice this wire here serves no particular purpose other than to hold this into focus. It's just clamping it down onto the board. I now have the, the uh, black, red, and yellow wires of this particular device running over to the analog in A0, the lowest analog in of the Teensy. The yellow wire being signal, the red wire being the supply, which is power in the electronics over here for the voltage divider, and of course the black wire being a common ground. So that's how I have it all hooked up. And let's take a look at a piece of code that can interpret this. And I'm actually, it's, it's pretty straightforward, so I'm going to write this on the fly. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Examples, and I'm going to go to Basics, and I'm going to go to Analog Read. Okay? And recall, I have mine hooked up on A0, so fortunately that's where this particular example piece of program is already hooked up. It's already set for A0. And the only thing I don't like about this example program is it, uh, it only it repeats itself in one in millisecond intervals, which makes it exceedingly difficult to be able to actually interpret when you have it displayed on your serial monitor. So I'm going to increase that to 500 milliseconds or a half a second. And let's load this up. And this should go relatively quickly. Not as quickly as I would like. Okay, I'm going to close this one out of the background. And we'll open up the serial window. And you can see that it's displaying basically ones and twos. It's because the object is nowhere near it. So let me move this over so we can actually watch this. I'll make this window quite a bit smaller. Move this down here. And now you can see that if I move this in, okay, so the LED here came on, and now our value shot up into the six, upper 6, 700 range, which is kind of what you would expect. Uh, this thing divides it by 5, okay, the, so that takes 12 volts and breaks it down to about 2.4. Remember this thing is a 3.3, the teensy is a 3.3 volt device. So if we take a 10-bit resolution of a uh, 2.4 volt input, um, that ends up being about a little over 700 or so uh, out of 1024. So it works out to be perfectly, uh, it fits everything really nicely. So this is able to discern the proximity and be able to handle the transfer move it away okay it essentially shuts off the power move it in it turns it back on um, I do have a couple minutes left this uh, video can go as long as 15 before it cuts it off so why don't I clean this code up a little bit and we'll make the light turn on uh, so let's take advantage of the onboard LED which is on pin 13 so I'm going to create a um, I'm going to create a variable. We'll just call it LED, and it's equal to 13 because that's the pin it's going to be on. Now I'm going to set that pin to output. So that's a pin mode, and let's call it well, it's LED comma output. 
So that'll mean that we can actually turn on and off the LED. And we'll go down here. And after we collect the data from the sensor value, we're going to do an if statement. If sensor value is um, greater than 500, let's, oops, I got to put my bracket in there. Sorry about that. If the sensor value is greater than 500, let's do a digital to LED, and we're going to make it high. Okay, so that should turn the light on. It's supposed to have been a comma. And that was supposed to be a semicolon. I am just messing this up left and right. And let's put an else. Let's make it low. And we'll tidy the code a little bit. Okay. So this should be able to take this information and turn on and off the onboard LED. I'm going to load it up. And, you know, I'm out. I won't. I'll pause it till it's done. Okay, the upload is done and it's running. Let me move this out of the way. And the onboard LED is right here. And you can see that if I move this in, the value goes over 500 and it turns on the LED. I move it away, the value drops back down, and of course it turns off the LED. So that should give you a uh, crash course in interfacing this thing. And I hope you found it useful, and I'll see you again later.